The single greatest obstacle to reaching Muslims in all of history is Christians who think they can win the hearts of Muslims by showing respect to the false prophet and the false book that keep Muslims in utter spiritual and psychological bondage. It would be one thing if these Christians in their own lives tried to win the hearts of Muslims by showing respect to the false prophet and the false book that keep Muslims in utter spiritual and psychological bondage. But they don't simply do this in their own lives. Instead, they train other Christians to do the same. They demand that other Christians do the same. They rush to the defense of Muhammad and the Quran wherever Muhammad and the Quran are being exposed. They shout from the rooftops, Christians, we must never criticize or challenge or insult or mock the Prophet Muhammad and the Holy Quran. Because if we do, Muslims will turn away from us in disgust and never listen to us again. Rather, we must respect their Prophet and their book, because when they see how respectful we are to their Prophet and their book, their hearts will melt. They will rush to us to embrace us, and then, only then, will they listen to us. Not surprisingly, since these Christians believe that nonsense, they view those of us who are constantly blasting away at Muhammad and the Quran as a hindrance to the gospel. We're somehow keeping Muslims away from the truth by destroying falsehood. And so these Christians decide that for the sake of the gospel, they have to attack us in order to get us out of the way so that they can go on winning the hearts of Muslims. The result is that as we're moving forward, exposing lies about Muhammad and shattering myths about the Quran, we're constantly being attacked from behind. As we're moving forward, as we're seizing the opportunity God has given us to wreak havoc on the foundations of Islam, there are always, always, always Christians running up behind us, trying to trip us, flinging dirt and rocks at us, stabbing us in the back. And they're thoroughly convinced that they're serving God and furthering His kingdom by dedicating their lives to undermining the Christians who are undermining Islam. Of course, as we're being constantly tripped up from behind, we're simultaneously hearing from an endless array of keyboard jihadis who long for our deaths. And so we go to sleep each night to the melodious words of those who want us dead, as we see in this comment from last night. Can't wait for this censored wood to be butchered. Why do we continue? Well, we also get to wake up to the words of those who are leaving Islam and becoming Christians. Here's a comment I woke up to this morning. A comment on the same video that incited a poor keyboard jihadi to say that he can't wait for me to be butchered. I left Islam two days ago after watching your videos for almost a year. I strictly believed in it because I knew little about it. Thanks, David Wood. Jesus saved me using you. Christians of the world, if you want to lead a prisoner out of a dark dungeon into the light of day, and you notice that the prisoner is shackled to the floor, showing respect to the shackles is not going to help you rescue the person. You have to break the shackles. If you want to help Muslims learn how to break shackles. Learn how to break Muhammad. Learn how to break the Quran. Muslims of the world, I am not here to be a spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine of the gospel go down more smoothly. I'm here to be an earthquake that shakes your religion to pieces until there's nothing left that can be shaken. And what can't be shaken is Christ. And if you have a problem with me shaking your religion to pieces, whining about me in the comments section of YouTube isn't going to stop me. 
longing for someone to butcher me isn't going to stop me. If you want to stop me, you're going to have to do what your fake prophet ordered you to do to the people who exposed him as the fake prophet he was. But you'd better bring an army. Or you might get humiliated.